No, what was your question? You also forgot? If you forgot, <laughs> uh, then we, you are worse than me. <laughs> Yes, about, about foreign land, yes. Yeah, so, you know, no, exactly what was it? I know about living with, yes, acquiring. Yes, no, for example, in your case, Anno, alhamdulillah, you have a, a child who is overseas to study. Very good. From now, when you finish, you come in. That's it. Another thing, when we go overseas to study, why we don't help Algeria, Morocco, Malaysia, the our Muslim countries, why? Why do we so good at taking the brains? I was told yesterday that France now is opening, for, if you are an Algerian doctor, welcome. They used to have conditions. Now, just come. See? Why these people study so hard in Algerian universities when they become very, very good? The last one, he made a surgery on uh, the king of Denmark, Algerian, very young surgeon. Look where they are, but they can't work in Algeria because the system is made to kick them out so that Algeria doesn't become a power like Turkey or like Malaysia or like another country. You understand? So this is the problem. This is it. Must, if somebody finishes his studies, go in. Now, if they stay, they must do that. That da'wah differs from alim to, let's say, janitor. Let's say I'm a janitor. I clean toilets in, uh, in uh, London. I should never miss my Jumu'ah and certain days of ibadah in the masjid, donate to my, my community, make sure my children go to Islamic school, this type of things. If there is no Islamic school, we create Islamic school. If there is no graveyard, we buy a piece of land and bury our Muslims according to Islam there. The mistake you do, if you ever live in overseas, don't be buried in a Muslim country. Be buried there as well. The land belongs to Allah anyways. So many, for example, Malaysians live overseas. But when they die, they bring them here. Same thing with Algerians. They live in France, but they be buried as if burial in Algeria will save them from Jahannam. Don't forbid. Maybe more Jahannam in Algeria. You better stay there and let the call in, uh, in Europe. That way. <laughs> Serious. Why? So that we claim that land too. We have parents, grandparents buried in France and Paris and London. And... If we keep just bringing, then the French, the French are happy. They will help you to take the body. But, oh, they will ask the Muslim countries, would you please give some more respect to our uh, graveyards? And the Algerian president will issue a decree uh, beautifying the graveyards of the Jews and Christians to show we are better than them. Let them beautify first ours. Reciprocal treatment. We do to you what you do to us. Simple as this. Alas. So please, no Muslim sister, don't make that mistakes. Please, my sister, you rather stay like that and married than to be married with a, 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 a non-Muslim man. Even Catholic, even if he's Christian or Jew, let alone Hindu and Buddhist, or you, you even worse. But it's our duty as Muslim brothers and sisters to have, to refer those who are not married to each other, marry them and help them. No, it's not easy. It's not easy. And uh, please don't think marriage will necessarily make you happy. Look, now everybody's listening. Takbir. <laughs> Takbir, the antennas, I saw antennas going up. <laughs> Listen, marriage, if you live it, the way Allah wants it, makes you happy. Just to marry someone does not make you happy. Please understand this. To marry someone, or to marry even four wives for a man, he is not going to make you happy. Unless you marry according to the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu You treat your wife the way Allah wants you to treat her, and the way Rasulullah Sallallahu treated her. Then, happiness comes. 
Please understand that, my brothers and sisters. And please don't be in denial. Let's say Sheikh Zubair used to be, mashallah, 20, what, 25 when I got married? I am I'm in my late uh, 40s, about to enter 50. I'm no more that young man. And I should accept my wife the way she is. She is no more 22 or 23 when she married me. She is in her 40s, uh, late also about to. So what happens? Meaning, we should accept that. Some people are in denial. He thinks he's still young. So I need another one. No problem, but do it the right way. Do the halal, do the sharia. Uh, tell your first wife, you are invited next Thursday. To my <laughs> wedding, I think. She will have a... Tell khalas, at least you can even marry the other one. me here. But to do it behind her back, I don't think that's manhood. No, it's not manhood. Not, not Islam, manhood. I say, you are not a man. Tell her. She get upset for a few days, but she accepts. But, but, to no, that's not good. That's not good at all. So, what I'm saying here, my sisters and brothers, marriage does not necessarily make you happy. What makes you happy is living the sunnah of Rasulullah inside marriage. How? For example, you be kind and loving. You understand that she's a human being, that she makes mistakes. You forgive and forget. Same thing. You have to understand he's a human being. He has mistakes. He has shortcomings. He's not perfect. Forgive and forget. That you should never hit. Rasulullah Sassim said, never hit a woman. Some man, the first thing is hitting. Well, that's not Islamic. Because the first thing Rasulullah Sassim said, in case the woman is rebellious. When she is rebellious, not, not when him. Sometimes it's the man who is creating problems is to advise her and be patient on her. And when you advise, it's called wa'ad, meaning really wanting her to change. It's not, you're not upset. Like me, now I'm speaking, I'm giving you the best advice. I'm not upset, alhamdulillah. Number two, if it doesn't work, don't sleep near her as punishment for her. Don't sleep near her. Go sleep somewhere else. If she doesn't miss you and feel sorry, then, Hit her with what? With siwak. My siwak is in the house. Here. Siwak is the toothpaste. You take the toothbrush, sorry, not toothpaste. <laughs> take some toothpaste and throw it. <laughs> toothbrush. And to the thigh. That's, that's what is hitting. Allah says, Fadribuhun. But they didn't say take a baseball bat and hit her. Because if you don't, it's the sunnah that tells you that, that will identify what type of hitting. There is hitting that takes to death. That's not what Allah wants you to do. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, لا تقبح الوجه لا تضرب الوجه ولا تقبح Don't hit the face and never call names. There are people who call their wives names. Bad names. How can you? That, is, that hurts more than physical. And also, if it never hit the face. And Rasulullah Sassu said, don't leave bruises. If this doesn't make sense to her, then you call one of her family and try to, not even you, the coolest head in your family with the coolest head in the her family. Let them talk. Hakam, it's called Hakam min ahli wa Hakam min ahli. If they don't find a solution, khalas. Let's, we came amicably, we depart amicably. This is Islam. This is Islam. When a man, you know, feels he's better than his wife because uh, she aged. Of course, who made her age? You. With all the babies that you had with her. Poor, poor lady. And careful, you never find better than the first one. I'm telling you now. Careful, you never find better than the first. Why? The first took you the way you were. And she was naive. He took you the way you were. You know, maybe nothing, zero, maybe bigger. And she sobbed with you until you made some money. Now when you have some money 
Another lady saw that you have money, <laughs> so she want to share. Careful from second women. Everybody wants to be nice to you because uh, they know you have some money somewhere. Takmir, why sisters are quiet? It's in your favor. Takmir, no serious, serious. So my brothers and sisters, this uh, issue of uh, marriage does not necessarily make you happy. What makes you happy is how you behave with the person inside the marriage. Is the behavior. And if you saw love and respect, what do you expect to it? Love and respect. But if you saw hatred, yelling, shouting, bullying, disrespect, selfishness, just going out, what do you expect? What do you expect? So that's the problem. The problem is in us. Everybody should look at himself first. Instead of looking at the person and say you're wrong. I should look at my where I'm wrong. Maybe I'm Allah that's the safest way of solving problems. Fastest way of solving problems. And safe. So I know people who are married to four wives but never happy. Of course. Because they don't know how to even treat the first. You got it? Yes. And I know people not have not married at all, very happy. Very happy. Say alhamdulillah. I'm not saying uh, stop marrying. No, I'm saying they. The right thing is to marry. But to marry and number one, lower your expectations, please, in your uh, in your spouse. He or she is not perfect. That's number one. No one is perfect. The only perfect man is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Perfect in the sense that he doesn't sin. Even human mistakes he make. He makes a human mistake to, to prove he's a human. Okay, give me an example. Mistake, not sin. The Prophet never sins. Okay, give me an example of mistake. There was one about the planting of uh, of the palm trees. Yes. Very good. When he entered Medina, he told, what, what are you? They were like marrying the trees, pollinating the trees. He said, don't do that. So the next year, the following year, there, were, there was le less in quality date. He said, why is the date of this year not that good? They said, yes, why you told us? Remember when you walked in? And he said, you know the matters of your dunya better than I do. I was just giving an opinion. Yeah, the, the perfect example is crowning from Abdullah bin, bin Ummi Maktoum. When he saw the blind man, oh, he's like, not now. He didn't say it. The man didn't even see him. Sisters and brothers, let's say I'm blind and you do something bad in front of me. I didn't even see you. Allah tells you, don't do that. MashaAllah. Don't do that. He just like, oh, Abdullah, it's not now. It's not now. He was busy with leaders of Quraysh inviting them for Islam and Abdullah bin, uh, bin uh, Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anh, walked in to ask questions for that Allah corrected him should never do that that's a human mistake but it's not a sin okay and when he didn't say inshallah yes when he forgot to say inshallah mm. it's a human mistake but is the prophet going to lie never is he going to resort to Bomo Never. Is he going to uh, Billah, tell you to do something and he doesn't do it? Never. So, please understand about marriage. Most of you are married people here and even those youngsters who are not married to, to lower their expectations. Because when you have high expectations in people and then you'll be like, I thought she was Hafidah lil Qur'an al-Kareem. Allah Akbar. He knows only Allah Akbar. I thought he was Imam al-Shafi'i. Oh, he doesn't even know his real name. That weird. You know, you see what I mean? That's it. But, I ask about her family. I ask who is her father, who is her mother, who are her, you know, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, they go to the masjid, they look good. 
We judge by appearances. You didn't even do that. You fell in love. Good for you. Fall and jato and pain. What is sake? Good for you. Never fall in, in, in love. Love, but don't fall in love. Because you're using American slang. When you fall, it's always painful. A real love comes after marriage. Do you know that? Well, why not a real love? Is okay. When do you know? When do you love someone? Friend, friend. When do you say I really love this friend? When you know him better. When you live with them, suffer with them, travel with them. Same thing. Wife and husband don't love each other before marriage. And here is the proof. Why before marriage he opens the door for you? <laughs> he pushes the chair with flower. Why all those things are missing after marriage? After marriage he slams the car door. Or drive while you didn't even get Right there, get to the floor. Yeah. 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 There was a real flower before marriage. <laughs> now it's <Love> plastic flower. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. After that, no, no, no. What's that you got it, flower. brothers and sisters? <laughs> there is this man who was kafir. SubhanAllah, amazing. He said, while he was, his wife died before him, he said, I didn't even cheat you in my imagination. Can you believe this? He said, I never cheated on you even in my imagination. And he was careful. I forgot his name. I'll get to his name next time. He's a famous writer, a Russian. Podovsky, something like that. I forgot his name. Somehow I'm not good at remembering Russian names. <laughs> because most of them do. Muslim names I remember. 